Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own stone and brick. So here are some that I did out of the paper mixture that I will um, post a tutorial on that for you guys to see. And then these are some of the ones I did with the sand mixture. And these are much harder and they don't come off once you put them on. So it's up to you which ones you do. Those of you who follow me, you know that I have the helper tools and stuff. So check out the site for that. There's lots of them on there. But there are also several different types of stone making. I don't know if you can see that. And then these ones I have still masked, so I haven't unmasked them yet. When you take the masking off, it'll look like this. Okay, so you have the cobblestone, then you have the two different types of brick, and then you have this type of brick here that's like going this way and that way. And then you have your corner brick. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with the um, masking. You just grab at the corner of it and then you just pull that completely off. It's just basically um, masking tape that's made for the cast acrylic. And it comes off super easy. And I'll show you how to put these together. Once you have it unmasked, you should have two little handles that look like this. Pull the masking off of them as well. And then you're gonna need Loctite super glue or a super glue that will adhere to cast acrylic. I'm going to put this on this little piece of wood. Then I've got a scrap piece here. Okay, so I have some right on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ends of this and I'm going to dip it in there on all three of the sides. Then I'm going to blot off the very back side so that it doesn't stick to the wood. And I'm going to put it in there just like that. I'm going to move this from behind it so that I don't stick it to the wood and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. All right, so when you've done that, you have created handles so that you can pick it up. Of course that wasn't dry. Um so once you have your handles, it should look like this. Okay, so the next step, we're going to set that on the side because we're not going to do all of the ones for today. But I'm going to show you how to create your own stone. Whatever surface you're putting it on, remember it's going to stick to it so you're not going to be able to get it off, okay? This is MDF, and that's what I'll be using because that will be the base. The next thing I need to do is I have some sand. I've got some paint. It doesn't have to be marquee. It can be um, any kind of paint, really. I just have this because it was one of the little samples that they had. So that's what I'm going to be using. Okay, so I'm going to put some of my sand in here. Just like that. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to take some of this paint, not a lot of it, and I'm just going to put it in there. And I'm going to mix it in my sand. When I have the sand the color that I want, then I'll stop adding and mixing. As you can see, the sand is turning a brick red. And I didn't use a lot of it. You use very little. If you use too much, it'll get too wet. All right, once you have it the color that you want it, you can either let this dry, which you don't have to, and you can sprinkle it out once it's dry just as red and use it as a red like landscaping filler. Or you can use some Mod Podge or some wood glue. Or you can use some school glue. It can be the white school glue, it can be the Elmer school glue, it can be the wood glue, or it can be the Mod Podge glue. Either gloss or matte, it's up to you. It's any of those glues would work because they're like a PVA. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some of this gloss Mod Podge and I'm gonna pour it in there. The last time I used wood glue, but I just wanted to show you that both of them work. And you're gonna mix it in until you get a nice, good paste. All right, now when you get a paste that looks kind of like wet sand, that's where you need to be. If you want to add in some glitter to have it like a little shine to it, you can do that and mix it all in. It's up to you. So like they have this and then that would just give it a tiny bit of like rock glitter. If you just kind of like how your stones have a little bit of fleck. Now brick you don't really need that with, but when you're doing your stone, it would help make it look more natural just by having a couple little shiny iridescents. So I'm not really gonna add much more. I just wanted to show you that you could. And then if you look, you can see how it just shines a tiny bit. I don't know if you can really see that on camera or not. But you can do that. Okay, so once you have this done, you wanna put your stencil on the side of your house or on your landscaping, wherever it is you're gonna put it. And then you're gonna hold it in place and you're gonna basically just squish this in all of the gaps. Without doing that. Make sure you're holding it nice and steady as to don't slide. And just take your paint stick and just go back over it to flatten it out. I will warn you, it is messy. Now, if you use the wood glue, it is a little bit thicker, so it doesn't um, spread out as easily as this glue does.
Okay, once you have it, you want to lift that up and then you have a perfect layer of brick. Wipe off any of the excess that you don't want on there. And then go back and clear that edge if you went over any. Wash this very, very good immediately after you're done so that you don't have it dry on there. Now, if you want to do another one and you're pretty good with your hand being steady, you can slide it in there and then do the next row just like that. But it is best to wait for it to dry. That way you don't over compensate and get it on the areas that you don't want it. Like I just totally moved that whole row just now because I moved it and it's like I said it's best to wait until you're you're done with the first row and let it cure. Okay, when you get that all done, then lift that up. And again, like I said, it does work better if you wait for this to dry because then you're not gonna do what I did. I actually slid that when I did it and I squished some underneath of there. But if that happens to you, just take a needle and just go in there if it, as long as it's still wet you can fix that. Now that'll dry and it'll look like brick and it didn't come out up here as you can see because I pulled it too quickly. So make sure you're pulling it slow. If that happens to you when it's completely dry, just go back over and redo that area. All right, now when you're drying this, you wanna go ahead and just use a microfiber rag and just blot it dry. Do not bend this because it's not gonna bend, it's gonna snap. It's 1 8 inch thick. It should come pretty clean. That's that. Now, I've got a tiny bit left of this mixture. I'm going to show you how to do the other one that I have already peeled. And then I'll show you the cobblestone. One thing you can do is you can also take this and put some masking tape on it and put some tape down if you think that you're going to move it. And that will help hold it in place as well. Since I seem to have Butterfinger hands today, I'm going to just tape this one down.
Make sure you hold that down when you remove that tape so that it doesn't pull up before you want it to. Okay, so I'm just gonna lightly make sure all my bricks are coming up and then there you have it, there's your bricks. Looks like one of them moved slightly when I did that. So I'm going to put that one back in place. There you go. Now, if you want this to stick best, it's best to use the wood glue, not the Mod Podge. So if you use the wood glue when you're mixing this, it will adhere to whatever surface you're doing it on a lot better than the Mod Podge does. The other thing, if you want your bricks to look like they were laid by an actual person that's not a professional, you can move them around while it's still wet. Okay, I'm going to wash this off and I'll be right back. Again, just blot it dry, where you can just let it air dry. Now the next one is the cobblestone that I've already showed you. This is the paper mixture, which will pop off, and you can glue them back on whichever way you want. And then this one, is the sand mixture without the paint additive. All right, so now I need to get some more sand. I've rinsed everything out, sort of. <laughs> Not perfect, but sort of. And that's okay. This time I'm gonna add a little bit of paint additive to it. I did not do that with those. But just a little bit of brown, not a lot, and maybe a little bit of black. We'll see what it looks like after I mix it. And you can do this multiple times too. You don't have to have um, it all the same. You can get a smaller one and do different mixtures and then mix it in and put like maybe this one brown, that one tan, and so on. So here it is where I've got a little bit of brown and a little bit of black and I didn't fully mix it as you can see. Now I'm going to take some wood glue. This is just the normal wood glue that I'm always using. It's just in a different bottle. You can use Wood Glue Max or Tight Bond. Make sure you're mixing it all in there really good. Now it's turned a little bit more darker than I anticipated, but that's okay because it's not that big a deal. At this point, I can add some more brown if I want, but I'm okay with the little bit that's showing through. I find it easier when I tape it down, just so you know. Um, it's a learning curve. So I just designed these and started making these. So this will be something we'll be doing together. And so far I really like the outcome of this that I've done. 
Now this is the first time I did those at all. I've only done this one on the other board. But they look like they're turning out great and I love the red. It makes it look like real brick. You can do any color pretty much, I think. Now, one thing I will say, if you want to add a different texture to the top of yours, besides just having them flat, like I've been taking this going across here, you can do that before you get done um, untaping it and moving it off of there. You can certainly do that. So, like, if you wanted to have some little bumps and notches in there, you can take the back of... A needle and you can kind of press it down in certain areas to give it a little bit more texture because it'll dry that way it doesn't have to be perfectly flat and if you want to even take some out of it like just take a little scoop out just so that it's got even more texture in there you can do that and then if you can see, it's kind of got a little bit of a flat surface here and not so flat surface there. So that is definitely something that is up to the person who's doing it. And or you can use the helper tools that are used for walls and stuff if you like. So these are some of the ones that I have. And you can use those as well, and you can just kind of bang them down in there to give that texture, or you can brush it off like that, and then it would have lines in it. This one, same way. And then there's this one, of course. And it'll just pull some off of there like that and then it just gives them a little bit of a texture so you'll be able to compare the straight ones to this one and if you don't like it fill it back in and then just go back over it And I didn't do it real hard in the middle because I still want those to have a little bit of texture. I'm going to wash this off and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to pull off my tape very carefully. And then I'm going to just kind of lightly wiggle that a little bit to get that to lift up. Okay, so it looks like that. We'll let it dry and I will post the pictures on Facebook and also on my website. So I'll also put the link below for this as well and it's a set of four or you can do them individually. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a question, suggestion, or comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.